They're like, oh, look at this nice red pepper. Nom, nom, nom. What have ah! I done? <laughs> Here, have the potatoes. You don't Here, don't worry about the grubs. Just get the potatoes. Good morning, beautiful people. Uh, it is late morning. It is starting to get hot. Uh, we got that many potatoes out of the first bed. That was a 16-foot bed. Uh, we have this 12-foot bed left. We're gonna dig this up real quick before it gets too hot. This is our one of our favorite activities on the homestead is digging up potatoes. It's, it's honestly digging for buried treasure. Uh, we've gotten some kind of weird looking ones. I think this is the second one that we got that I don't know what's going on there, but that's kind of cool. It's interesting. A couple, couple decent sized ones. I'd say we did pretty good. These are uh, all edible size. They're all, I mean, we could bake some of these. They're good size. Nothing like in the uh, you know, foot potato sized as we call it, but yeah, we're doing pretty good. So we're gonna keep digging before it gets too much hotter and uh, see what we find. Oh, nice. Ah, oh, sporked. Did I spork it? Yeah. Oh, yep. Look, there's a potato. Get it. That's Thanks. a big one, sister. Dad, look, it has a hole. Yep, right here on the surface. Yeah, so much for burying them. Yeah, oh, wow. like look at this. Look at the size of the this one. Wow, that's a nice one. Oh, it's heavy. Man, that was a good potato. Look at that, it's completely hollow. Oh. Oh. You can make an ocarina. Yeah, it's like. already an ocarina. Looks like Back it's called out by a bug. Make it whistle. I literally can. Wow, look. There's more to die. There's some vines that are still green. But there's two dogs. Ah, are you kidding me? Potato <laughs> mm, I gotta show. That's hilarious. So we found a potato that had bug damage and it's like completely hollow. And what's this dude do? <laughs> Come on. made an ocarina out of a rotten potato. See, when life gives you bad potatoes, make ocarinas or something like that. Not sure, not sure if that's how the saying goes. Here, buggy, here, buggy, here, buggy. Whoa. Whoa. That's the winner right there. That's the biggest one we've got so far oh, all right there is our hall that's out of a 16 foot bed a 12 foot bed and we started with maybe five pounds of seed thank you guys for coming out here and sweating while we knocked this out this morning this is cool that's uh that's quite a few quite a few meals 
I'd say honorable mention were the large nose, goofy looking. There's another one. That one looks hilarious. Look at the size of that. And then one. there's the giant one. That's the biggest one we pulled up. There's uh there's some others that are pretty big too. Like that, that one's pretty good size. That one's a good size. Uh, plus the basket that we picked last night, we uh, probably pulled up. I don't know. We did maybe like four or five feet of a of that bed down there and hey, filled up a basket. So. This is a pretty good haul. We're pretty happy about this. All right, I guess let's uh, take them in the barn, get them out of the sun. I have to get a basket real quick. Okay, we'll get a basket. <laughs> Whoo, it is already hot out here. All right, so cool weather is on the horizon, but it is not here yet. So today, I mean, it's noon o'clock right now. Uh, to avoid the heat this afternoon, instead of being outside, I'm going to be doing stuff in the kitchen. I'm doing a job that Meg doesn't particularly want to do in the kitchen. I'm going to be making fermented hot sauce out of our super hot peppers. So this plant right here that's falling over, actually I think it's three plants possibly. Uh, these are red savinas. Let me, let me find one. I haven't been picking these. Uh, they're basically like kind of like a red habanero. Um, I believe a red savina at one point, like back in the 90s, was one of the hottest peppers in the world. That was a long time ago. There's way hotter peppers now. Uh, but nevertheless, this is a very hot pepper. They can burn your skin just by handling them like I'm doing now. And this one has a bug hole in it, so I'm gonna have to pick a whole bunch. Okay, bug, whatever you are, go away. I'm gonna have to pick a whole bunch, cut them open, Did make sure they don't have them. this ready one? Why don't you pick Kachuchas? I'll pick the Savinas. Because these are very spicy. I don't want you to get spicy on your hands. I'm gonna get a whole bunch of these cut them all up and ferment them. When you ferment peppers, super hots, uh, the fermentation process actually takes a lot of the heat out of them. Last year I did it with some scorpion chilies we grew. They were the apocalypse scorpion and they were too hot to eat, just for me anyways. Well, fermenting them, it brought the heat level down to a manageable level. So that's what I'm gonna do this year. Uh, I really grew these with that in mind and I have a whole bunch of these that are very, very in need of being picked. These are absolutely beautiful peppers. Yeah. Are you picking kachuchas? You're picking as many as you can get? Yeah. Good. Notice the ants don't really mess with these. They must be really spicy. So for the recipe I'm doing, I only need a pound. But that's gonna go fast. Just from picking these, I like wiped some sweat off of my upper lip and I already feel spice on my lip. And that's just from picking them. So yeah, buggy don't touch these red savinas. They are too spicy. They look like little bell peppers of death. All right, I'm nearing the point. Uh, I think that's more than enough. And it doesn't even look like I've made a dent on these plants. There's hundreds of hot peppers. And there's hundreds more coming. By the looks of it, I need to pick kachuchas as well. You can see there's a bunch of kachuchas that have come up ripe. Those are ready. Uh, I think we'll probably end up making another batch of kachucha hot sauce. But that's a good start. If I need more, I'll come get more. But that feels like maybe a couple pounds. All right, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna get washing wash all these up and then start dicing them. Fermenting peppers is actually really straightforward. Like you clean them, cut them up, put them in a jar, add your salt and water, and then put the lid on and burp it every day. Like super, super simple. Almost a pound. So, wow. That's, right there, yeah. That's gonna be like a cork. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so I guess we'll go to two pounds. So we weighed out two pounds. So that means we probably have like five pounds here. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> well, I'll cut this up. I would like to ferment in a gallon jar this time. I did a half gallon jar last time and it yielded not very much. By the time you blend it down, once it's fermented and you blend it, I mean, you figure there's a lot of air in there. See, that's a bad one. <laughs> I'll throw that one out. Uh, and once you blend it, it just goes down to nothing. Yeah. Does that look like mouse damage? Mm, or something. Maybe caterpillar? I think that's like mouse damage. Sorry, mouse. Sorry, mouse. Be like, oh, look at this nice red pepper. Nom, nom, nom. What have <laughs> I done? <laughs> Look at that one, that was huge. I don't think these are anywhere near as spicy as those scorpions. Oh really? Yeah. Scorpions burned my eyes when I was sitting here cutting them last year. This right here is why I'm cutting them open. Some of them look good on the outside, but on the inside the seeds are moldy. So I'm leaving those out. All right, that is 115 so almost two pounds good enough i'm gonna grab a jar i don't know you think that'll fit in a half gallon no i think i should grab a gallon yeah you'll need a gallon it won't fill up a gallon but you'll need a gallon for that okay what three tablespoons of salt per pound per pound yeah so i'm gonna just add peppers put some salt add more peppers add more salt uh until i get until i'm out of peppers and then i'll add water and you cover cover the peppers in water mm -hmm. Put a lid on it and walk away. Submerge them. Yeah, you submerge put, them. Put a, put a weight. I didn't even weight them last time. Oh, you didn't? Nope. Okay. So hopefully doing it the way I did it last year, I'll have success again. Yeah. All over everything. That's fine. Well, that's one. So there will be six. Six of these? Yeah. Okay, next. That's two. Cool. I know the jar says cranberries, but that is not what is in this jar. Definitely not cranberries. <laughs> cranberries of death. <laughs> there you go. Now I just have to add water till the peppers are covered, put the lid on, and then really, basically I'll shake it up every day, um, open it, burp it, because if it's fermenting, it's going to be like, creating carbon dioxide. As long as it's doing that, that means I have the right bacteria and the right things going on in there to actually ferment it. Pretty pretty easy to tell when it starts fermenting because it starts bubbling like it's carbonated. Now it's just gonna live in here in the kitchen, probably right here over in this corner. And every day, once or twice a day, I'm gonna come over here, crack this lid, give it a burp, and that's all I'm gonna do. Uh, I did this last year with the seven pot, no, the scorpion, yes. scorpion chili. And, you know, the half the places you read, they say you have to wait anything you ferment so it stays below the liquid. I found a recipe that said, no, you don't, just do it this way. So I tried it and it worked. We've tried the, what are they called? The mason tops? Yes. We've tried the mason tops things and every single time we've tried those, they mold. Yeah. I did this method, it worked. Oh, yeah. So, I'm gonna try it again this year, see if it works. All right, time for dinner, getting dinner ready. Uh, what you just saw Meg cut up is called a trombuccino. It's a squash. These taste a lot like a pumpkin. Um, actually, they taste so much like a pumpkin, you won't even know the difference. Yeah, so, kind of like a butternut slash pumpkin. I would say they're closer to a butternut squash, actually. Yeah, probably. That's probably where they came from. It's yeah, probably, it started as a butternut squash. But yeah, you know, your normal cucubit. Um, they have pretty good flavor, they're buttery. Really tasty, they actually. Are tasty. Um, I got these seeds from my friend Billy over at Permapastures Farm. Uh, he grew the heck out of them last year. I was like, dude, 
let me get some seeds. And yeah. so he gave me, I think, two of them, and they're loaded with seeds. Uh, so I saved seed from them, and then we planted them this year, and lo and behold, they have done really, really good for us this year. Yeah, they have. Actually, they've been almost the only thing that's done good yeah. squash-wise. Uh, you know what? While we're waiting for dinner, I'll walk out there and show you the squash patch, or what's left of it. Um, the squash bugs have been miserable this year. Uh, oh, well, yeah, they've, they've been fine. They've been very happy. They're not upset. They're, uh, their numbers are outrageous. Like, I'm not going to use poison, but I sure have thought about it. Every time I walk over there and see the legions of squash bugs, mm -hmm. it's like, as soon as we harvest everything, I'm cleansing this area with fire. Yeah. Uh, probably not. We have weed barrier down. I don't want to well, burn you could all that up. Remove out. that and cleanse it with fire. <laughs> but they'll escape. It's true. All right, I'll walk out there right now. Man, I sure hope it rains. The uh, the rain situation has kind of died down. Uh, we haven't been getting as much rain as we honestly have all summer. I think it's raining like it's rained once or twice in the past month. It's kind of frustrating. All right, so just standing up here on the hill above. You can see there's trombacinos littered everywhere. There's a huge one right there. That one's massive. So I have trombacinos out here in the yard. I have trombacinos everywhere. They've escaped. So they're just doing their thing. They're wandering. They're doing really good. Um, we planted pumpkins. We planted all sorts of pumpkins. We planted, uh, gosh zucchini various different squashes and i think we've probably maybe had two or three zucchinis out of here the plant gets big enough to start producing and then the squash beetles annihilate it um, i think i do see one zucchini over there i'm gonna make my way over there uh, but really honestly the only things that have done good have been the trombatinos yeah there's that big one i saw from up there that is massive huge 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 it looks like something's already trying to have a lunch. Yeah, if you look, that is a squash beetle. Uh, the little creepy crawlies, those are the squash beetle in their, like, it's not larval, I think that's called the nymph stage. So here's a zucchini, and if you look, it's covered in squash bugs. Covered. Horrible thing. Okay, so here's a zucchini. That one... Honestly, is done for. No point in even picking that. That'll become chicken food. That one. Is that one good? It's misshapen. Yeah, that one's good. That one's misshapen. But, yeah, there's, you know, maybe two. You gonna hold that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Really, the only thing that has done good out here has been the trombacinos. Um, I'm not mad about it. They actually keep a really, really long time. This is what's left of our squash patch. It is uh, nearly done for the season, which is okay. We're probably gonna have a couple, <laughs> at least 100 pounds of uh, trombacinos. You got it? You got it. Look at that one. Wow. Whoa, that's wow, a big, that's one. big one. <sighs> All right. We, uh, we got a thunderstorm that just kind of blew in. Like, there's blue sky over there. It's starting to sprinkle, too. Yeah. Ooh, those look good. Yes, they do. They smell good, too. Roast. Got a the roast in the Instant Pot. Yep. Wow, that shrunk a lot. It did, yeah. Like a lot, a lot. Ooh, do. it smells good. Yeah, it smells good. All right. Okay. All right. Just like that. Wow, I was just saying when I was out there, we need rain. Wow, it's raining real good. All right. Hooray for rain. interrupt this meal for some hail. Yeah, so we're getting like, I don't know, pea-sized hail. Okay, that's too much water. <laughs> wow, there's some big chunks coming down. Jeez, that's some big hail. Wow. <laughs> you stuck your hand out the window. That's some big hail. See something new every day. Oh, man. The swing blew down. <laughs> Every storm, that swing blows down. <laughs> you go, and that thing blows over. We will rebuild. We'll be all right. 
All right, how's dinner, everybody? Good. Please, can I make it down? Please, can you make it down? Yes. Yes, you can you please make it down. <laughs> that was good. Um, so I pulled out a jar of the onion marmalade that we made. Mm. What was that? A couple weeks ago. Mm. That's the best part. Oh that. my gosh, that, that stuff was is amazing. amazing. On roast beef. Good. So good. Really good. We are discussing our our favorite like New Year's Eve charcuterie yeah. plans. Uh, prosciuttos will be ready. We have copas ready. We have all sorts of stuff. That. Do some of that with some fine cheese, maybe oh, yes. a, a good brie. Uh -huh. some, oh, that'd be amazing some, on a some brie. Some good crackers, maybe some sourdough bread. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that stuff. We basically spend all year preparing food <laughs> for our New Year's Eve dinner. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good way to wrap up the it year. It is, it is. Pick the best out of everything you've preserved or yeah. made all year and then enjoy it at the end of the year. Yeah, it's so. good stuff. All right, we're going to end it right here. We will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.